We are back with Dr. Holiday Winnipeg Spine Sports Therapy. We're talking with the IT band today. Seasonal, right? Definitely, definitely. A lot of uh, runners come in with uh, some some hip and knee pain at this time of year. Um, we sort of everybody wants to talk about the IT band and sort of think that maybe it's an IT band issue. So we're going to delve into a little bit of the anatomy of the IT band, the muscles that connect to it, and how we can uh, how we can start to mobilize those and treat those. Teach you how to do it yourself. One of the things we see often is that people are going to roll the IT band directly, like go from here to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to propose a different, like a different method, right? Sure. You may have been instructed to do it one way. We're simply going to propose an alternative method, not the method, but a, a pretty good method with some pretty good reasoning behind it as to how you might want to attack any problems with your IT band. So just maybe something a little bit different. So let's talk a little bit about uh, maybe the common site of pain for this for people. Sure, yeah. And then uh, I'm a bit of an anatomy geek, so we'll kind of go through a little bit of where the actual IT band is, what it attaches to. So let's we'll start with that. Okay. Sure, so yeah. um, so we'll just I get you to pull up the pant leg or the short leg, and we're going to have a look and see. So uh, the IT band is just a flat tendon, slides down the outside of the thigh here. What most people are going to complain about when we see a lot of runners, the first thing they're going to say is they're getting this pain, and it's just sort of lateral knee into the uh, lower part of the outer thigh here. Um, it usually will stop them from running. They'll be running and this pain will just slowly start to increase and they'll just get this sharp pain in here. They can walk for a few minutes and all of a sudden that pain will usually subside and then they start running again, they're gonna feel it. So to understand the anatomy of where that IT band is, if we have him just go up on his tippy toes just a little bit on this foot, we'll just do that. So we can isolate the IT band. So I'm actually grabbing and I'm just rolling over this thick flat band of tendon right here. So that tendon now swoops down and he actually blends into the knee capsule. So it actually goes all the way underneath the kneecap. When that IT band comes up, what we're gonna do is it's gonna hit the hip bone here, the greater trochanter, and it's gonna split. It's gonna become two muscles. It's gonna become the glute max back here. It's gonna become the tensor fascia lata, which is this funny little teardrop shaped muscle coming off the front side of this pelvic bone right here. If you can find that little sharp bone in the front of your hip called your ASIS, just go outside of that, a little finger roll, and drop your fingers down, and you're gonna get this nice little hunk of meat right there. And that's that tensor fascia lata. This is gonna be real important here in a few seconds. So, as that IT band comes down, if we get him to tighten his quad muscle as much as he can, here's this vastus lateralis muscle. That IT band actually splits that vastus lateralis. So the big part of the quad here, there's also a seam of the quad back here. This is still quad, vastus lateralis. Not till we get into this little groove do we actually start to get into the lateral hamstring, the biceps femoris, okay? So we, we know when we're gonna start to roll this IT band that we're gonna have to get all portions of this quad in order to mobilize this IT band as well. When we come right back up here for a sec though, we'll go back up to that little TFL muscle, that tensor fascia lata muscle, right in this area. The mechanism of action of this muscle is going to be to do a little bit of hip flexion, and it's also going to turn the leg outward a little bit, okay? So you can see that it's gonna pull that knee out into that position. So if we just have him face the camera for a second, lots of times when we're running, for whatever reason, maybe we lose some dorsiflexion in the ankle, that might cause our leg to turn in. There's a whole host of things yeah, that yeah. could happen here. Something just clicked when you did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> great. <laughs> so this might turn into another segment. So if we just move that way, you can see you're gonna get an extra little bit of torque on that IT band. So we have to come up and address these issues. The other one is gonna be, what does this glute max do? So if he turns around, we know that our glute max is made for hip extension. So this is to actually, now this is gonna be his push off muscle. So as he's pushing off when he's running or walking, um, or you know, pick your weight training exercise, squat, deadlift, any, we want that glute to be nice and strong as well. And it's gonna provide a lot of tension down through that IT band and underneath that knee, okay? So there's the anatomy part. That's, that's, that's the fun part of this. So now that we know that, we wanna to learn to mobilize this. Sure. So let's, you go ahead and... All right, so I guess the first thing we're gonna do is, I mean, you can pick any foam roll you like. I mean, but the fact is, we're just gonna use this one today. The difference is, it's gonna provide you with a little bit more traction because of the raised areas. It's also high density too, so you're gonna have a lot more pressure on there. That's why we picked this one today. So I guess the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and attack the glute max, right? So the majority of your IT bands attach the glute max. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen off this muscle first or attempt to do that. So how we're gonna do it, Gonna come down to this position here. Now, we'll go from the side. I'm basically gonna start right at the top of my waist, right over here. From there, 
I'm going to go in small segments. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to roll from the top of my waist right down to about the middle part there. It's important when you're rolling not to think about rolling the whole area at once because you want to break it up into small manageable areas, basically allowing yourself to balance better and allowing yourself to have the best body position possible. So as you can, as I'm going through this, you feel there's a couple of knots here. So how many times do you pass through? I mean, you want to make sure you're breathing. Breathing, stay relaxed the whole time. And as you're getting higher into it, there you might find that there's a little bit more going on too. And you might also start hitting your glute medius at this angle as well. I think, and I think that there's one important spot. You, you talk about how high people roll that. People don't realize it. So if I have my, my pants here, my belt line is here, my actual iliac crest is here. So this is the actual pelvic bone here. So my glute max is gonna actually round up into here. So funny enough, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna roll above where I hold my pants, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I really wanna get that full length of that glute max. So you're um, going through more from yep. here. Exactly, yep. And then down through here. Perfect. And how long would you take to roll a glute? You know what, I'd say spend as much time on there until you feel a noticeable difference the sensation. One of the things is you want to avoid pain but be uncomfortable, right? Because there's going to be a certain amount of discomfort involved in doing rolling, right? For sure. One thing we tell people is that, you know what, if the sensation is something that you can carry on a conversation or think about something else, that's fine. If it goes to a point where all you can focus on is the sensation being created by the pressure, that's pain. And you want to kind of get out of that position because if you can't focus on anything else except the sensation, the pain, you can't breathe, and if you can't breathe, you can't relax, and then all of a sudden, all of the things that are gonna come with a foam rolling are not gonna be able to happen if you're gonna be stressed and tense, right? We're trying to relax, and relaxation is like a full body process, which includes regular breathing and staying calm. So I mean, if all you're focusing on is that, you're probably holding your breath, which is definitely something that's not gonna be productive for helping to release any trigger points, because you need to have regular breathing to help with that process. So. And keep in mind, you know, our injury site might be on that, that lateral thigh there, right? Like, well, that's where we might feel the pain. But we're trying to work on the attachment part. So if we, if we look at the anatomy of this tendon, it's just a flat, you know, white piece of connective tissue. It's really non-elastic. There's very minimal stretch in that IT band. So we'll talk about, you know, whether we should stretch that or not. But when we get to the glute or we get to the tensor fascia lata, those are muscles. Those have high elasticity. So those are the things that we want to mobilize the most. Um, so if you find that spot in here and you find there's a really painful spot, that might actually be the start of the injury site. And because it is tightening up and pulling up on that, it's actually creating that tension across that IT band. And that IT band rubs on the knee as we go through knee flexion. So that's why we're getting sore down here. But like he said, keep in mind, if you're getting a really painful spot, that doesn't mean we need to mash it. We want to mobilize all around it, improve the blood flow, improve tissue mobility. The one thing I mentioned before is, it, is the IT band, as Dr. Holiday was saying, it has a number of different attachment points. So if I'm, if I'm holding a piece of rope, Dr. Holiday and we're pulling it tight, and we okay, say, well, we're going to loosen the rope, and we keep hitting the rope, hitting the rope, but we're holding tight, that rope's never going to loosen, right? So the best thing to do is for us to loosen our grip, then the rope's going to get slack. We're doing the same principle, right? Sure. So that's why we've done it like this. So you can, we've rolled the glute just one at a time, but if you can also... If the pressure is too intense, you can do it both at a time as well, uh, both at the same time. So starting up here and rolling down like that. But you probably want to use a longer roller, a short roller like this, not going to be good for that. So that's why we're just going to do one at a time on this side. So yeah, once we've done all of the glute, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit the TFL up. Now where this one lives, and Dr. Holiday was describing it right here, it's kind of like if you're going to put your hand inside your pant, it's that muscle that's going to be right here in the front, right? So you can use one leg or you can use two legs. When I'm using one leg, I find that I can get a lot more pressure on there. Definitely. Right? Definitely. So I mean, I can, I can get this leg off to the side and I can really apply that pressure right over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start high and then I'm going to work my way lower, right? So I'm going to go ahead and find this muscle here. There we go. Spin around there and check it out. Actually, I'll do this side for you so you can see. Okay. 
So now the whole, now you may feel that there's a lot of pressure on there to start off with. The idea is to let that foot just kind of stay neutral there. You feel any tenderness? Oh yeah, there's lots of tenderness in there for sure. So as we work our way down here, we're going to talk about, you know, where we should roll and maybe where we don't want to roll further down. But the one thing I will say, when you hit this TFL muscle in the right spot and you're actually working that muscle really well, it's going to give you that, if you've ever rolled the IT band right down in this area, there's a real important uh, structure underneath there. There's a fat pad um, and it's going to mash that into the bone. If you've ever rolled that and had that sharp pain from that, you're going to get that very similar sort of achy front lateral thigh pain just by rolling that TFL. So that kind of lets you know that you're in the right area, you're on the proper connective tissue for that TFL, okay? So for rolling, I mean, we, we do call it foam rolling, but the idea is we want to get pressure, right? So I mean, sometimes rolling may be too much. Like for me, I'm just going to hang out here because right now, as I'm, as I'm pushing my hip into this a little bit more, I can feel that you know what, there's gonna be a noticeable decrease in that pain. Like right now, before when I started off, it was about a seven, now it's probably down to three. And that's just by applying the pressure and breathing, even though I'm, if I can still talk and carry on, then I'm breathing just fine, right? So then this area is now have reduced pressure. Oh, there's another one, maybe about a half an inch down. Now stuff's lit up again, and it's pretty intense. So yeah, it's, it's bordering on more intense, but it's still, it's discomfort, right? And so you can still even change position there and come on the inside, like that. So it's, how, how long, to, there you go. That was a spot. That was definitely, that was definitely electric. <laughs> so how long do you spend, I mean, ideally you don't want to rush these things, especially if you're going into pre-workout or if you just come back from a run, take as long as it takes, right? For sure. But just remember that too much rolling you may cause irritation too. So you know two to three minutes until you're noticing that there is a reduced amount of sensation, right? Yeah. Or else if you have, you know, if you come to Dr. Holiday or you or you come to from a physical therapist, they give you particular time to follow, follow what they say. I'm saying if you haven't done anything before, go for that noticeable reduction in the pain and then you should be doing well after that. So we have the glute max and the TFL. So we've done those two. You can also use other things in your disposal, like a ball. The ball will also allow you to apply more pressure too, and sometimes you don't have a roller, but you may be in a place where there's a ball kicking around too, right? You can do the same thing with the ball. And you may find that you might be able to get into a little bit better angle because you don't have to worry about laying on a I got a long surface, this allows you to kind of go back and forth and get it at different angles while you don't really have to worry about staying on something long and awkward. So this might be also an option if you, if you ever show your clients these. We usually do it on a smaller ball. So smaller we, ball? Yeah, we'll use a, a smaller sort of acupressure ball that has a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, balance to it, right? So it's, yeah. not, it's not firm, mm -hmm. so yeah. But usually even, even a smaller surface area, so yeah. The one thing to remember, you know, the knobs on this roller, you know, are providing a real small surface area. So if you're using something smaller, yeah, it's probably going to be a little more pokey. You might yeah. actually find it a little more uncomfortable. You know, the medicine ball, I haven't used that one before, but I think that's a great, great add-on because it's a little more contact surface there. So um, you can move into certain areas. Yeah, good. So now we're going to get to the tough part. Well, I mean, it's going to be tough because I feel like it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of sensation. <laughs> so, so as Dr. Holly was saying, like where this IT band goes, I mean, you're talking about on this side here and on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna attack it kind of on both sides to loosen it up on the edges because it's gonna be the separating tissue between the quad and the hamstring here and also between the heads of your quadriceps. So which side do you wanna do first? You pick whatever one is first. All right, so let's just try to do, do the it. front side. So yes. if we're gonna do the front side of the quad, we're gonna, here's the IT band coming up the outside here. So we're not gonna mash that IT band, like you said, straight in sideways. When we do that, when we get down this low in the knee, there is a little fat pad here and it's really sensitive and people will roll this spot and say, oh yeah, there it is, there it is. And they'll keep just jamming this thing into there because they think they're, they're mobilizing this IT band. Again, keep in mind, this IT band is non-elastic tissue. You're mashing that flat tendon into the side of the quad and a little bit of a fat pad in there. It's gonna be a really sharp pain. 
So we're going to take that roller, we're going to kind of put it on a bit of a 45 degree angle coming anteriorly and a 45 degree angle going posteriorly and then we're going to roll. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking that IT bend, when the roller is on the front side we're pushing the IT bend, mobilizing the quad, the vas lateralis, and then when the roller comes on the back side we're pushing the IT bend this way and we're mobilizing the back part of the vas lateralis before we get to the hamstring. Okay? So maybe do the anterior one first. Your toe will be down. This is even just like I can just feel what's coming. So the good thing about a roll like this, you can you can kind of get a little bit more particular with where you're going to go because it's not going to slide around. So we're going to. And you'll feel the difference between being right on the side and too much on the front of your quad because it's going to get a little bit, little bit slippery. You'll find that it's like going on the edge of a spongy surface. That's how it feels to me anyway. And then you'll know you're kind of in the right area, right there probably. Yeah. And a good reference point for his thigh would be, you know, he doesn't want his... He wants his leg, his toe, his ankle sort of pointed anywhere from 45 degrees down into that position, sort of down towards the floor. If he's totally flat and he were to bring his hips back, then we know he's just mashing straight lateral. We don't want that. So he's got this nice little bit of you know, forward roll going on and he's just going to work that roller. He can work that roller all the way down to the outside top of the kneecap. And again, take your time. If you find some spots and you want to hang out in that area, you want to just sort of move the roller back and forth nice and slow, right? You will hit a few hot spots, a few tender spots. That's okay, right? We don't want to, we don't want to make it hurt. We want to know that if we sort of hang out in that area and move around a little bit, we can get it to loosen up. And this approach, I'll tell you now, because having rolled the IT band directly and doing this, this is much more manageable than doing it straight on, because straight on, it's almost a nightmare. It is very intense, and as we've as we've kind of mentioned here, that there's a, a different way, like the one we're showing you, where it's going to be just as effective, but not nearly as intense. And if something is so uncomfortable, what are the chances that you're going to do it all the time? Not likely, eh? No. People, one of one of the biggest things that I, when I go and do a talk and ask people if they roll um, their running injuries and and, and whatnot. Um, they all say no, they don't do it because they hate it because it hurts too much. So the, I just don't think they're doing it correctly, right? So, yeah. so we go through these body positionings to show them that it doesn't have to hurt. It should actually, by the time you're done, you should be able to walk around and go, wow, my legs feel looser, I feel good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, I guess the biggest thing too is a foot position, right? As we're saying, the foot position is key and leaning back too far, when you feel that sharp out right in there, you know that's, you've gone too far. So it should be not nearly as intense as it's been on the IT band before. So now we're gonna to go to this side. This would be a little bit trickier. So now we're gonna... Okay. You have a bad hamstring too, don't you? So uh, you know what? This has actually been doing a lot better since we've been doing those axial distractions. There you go. Surprisingly. So here, big point right there. Look at that foot position. He's got that angle just right at about 45 degrees you know, from perpendicular to the ground, we can see his vastus lateralis, this muscle belly here. We know this is a big, thick piece of the quad, and it's gonna go all the way to the underside of the uh, IT band over there. So he's in a perfect position now, and if he just keeps moving, there we go. And he might find a, you know, a real juicy spot sort of more down where the muscle starts to turn more into tendon. Those musculotendinous junctions tend to be a little more tender. But you can see that, that the majority of this is sitting on top of the roller. So we know that we're getting into that area that we're looking at, right? So I mean, if I was right, if the roller was right here and this is not being pushed up, you know we're not getting into it. As Dr. Holliday was saying, we're trying to mobilize it both sides by moving it around. So this is the area that we're kind of getting into here. Perfect. That, yeah, that IT band is just being pushed this way, in this direction. So there's the muscle belly, the IT band's on top of it. We're moving the IT band, you know, anteriorly and just rolling back and forth through there. It's good. There's going to be twitching going on right here. Yeah, things are waking up. Well, yeah, that's the good thing about a roll like this with some grid. Any kind of grid formation I find is like you don't really want to be slipping around too much. So this is going to at least provide me with like a, a little bit of a traction here so I can actually guide the process a bit better. 
Like, not that slipping off is going to be the end of the world, but you don't want to be slipping off too much because then the chances of it being pain free is going to be really reduced. See, hopefully, the idea is here when you see this twitching to apply the pressure there until it's like sensation kind of goes down a little bit. And yeah, so just by going on what we've done before, this is a lot more pain free than it was as opposed to mashing it straight on. So we've done the glute max where the majority of the IT band is tied onto TFL and also both of the both sides of the IT band around that vastus lateralis to hopefully mash and mobilize as opposed to hit it straight on, which is going to be a sensory nightmare. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then uh, as far as anything else, you know, one of the biggest things I think people always ask is, okay, well, how do I stretch out my IT band afterwards? So, um, you know, this is one of my, uh, one of my takes on it is that we don't really want to try and stretch the IT band, right? We don't want to stretch the lateral knee for one. And that, that is sort of like, you know, the stay, like a, like a stay on a, on a sailboat mast. That is sort of like the stay of the lateral knee. So we don't want to be stretching that out and sort of gapping that joint open. So we're not going to do anything down that far. Um, again, it's a flat tendon, so it's not actually, it doesn't have a lot of elastic tissue there. So it's not going to stretch very much. Um, you know, the stretching for this, and I don't know what your clientele said, it, but you know, the one muscle I might address a little bit is would be the glute max, right? Yeah. Maybe the one muscle where I'd say, okay, we can stretch, we can teach you how to stretch the glute max a little bit post-activity, you know, as a, as a sort of a recovery and a cool down, let's just stretch that glute a little bit just to mobilize it, okay? Sure. So if you want to just show that one stretch that, that I'd like to do for the glute max, and then if you want to- Go ahead, yeah, let's see it. Yeah, so let's see it. If you just want to lie flat on your back, I'll put you into that position for it. So again, a little bit of anatomy. So we know the IT band comes off the glute max, comes off the greater trochanter here, and it fans out like this. And when it fans out, it's going to attach along the sacral tuberous ligament and then along the iliac crest all the way up to the top of, you know, like I said, above the belt. So if we want to stretch the glute, we need to get the fibers that are going this way to stretch the opposite way. So we need to take this leg across the body. And as it comes across, we're going to adduct it, meaning bringing the thigh across the center of the body. And now, here's the IT band coming down. It hits that, that greater trochanter, and those fibers just sort of spread out like that in a big fan shape pattern. So now he should be feeling good stretch back into here. It might trickle down into IT band, and then the lateral hamstring and vastus lateralis here as we bring him up over here. Feel that? Uh, you know what? So knee to opposite shoulder would be the, would be the, the key reminder here. If he's gonna do it on himself, he's gonna take his arm, Going to slide it sort of close down to the ankle and he can just give that a good hold if i move it changes the stretch a little bit because i'm holding his pelvis when i stay here so he's going to get a better stretch if he's leaning up against something or someone's here giving him a little bit of assistance again just a nice mobilization for that doorway doorway yeah you can do a doorway if you can get into here and yeah. hopefully this doesn't obstruct but yeah yeah, yeah. right no this so. is really intense that's good okay so again, knee to opposite shoulder. If the knee's over here, it negates what we're doing and we're gonna get more of the hip rotators. We need that knee to come to the opposite shoulder. As soon as he gets over there, there we go. What would you say about this if I did have a knee problem to move my hand up a little bit closer? For sure, and you can stabilize, yeah, and even, and even use the other hand. Just like, wanna, like I said, we don't wanna gap that lateral knee. If he was way down here and he's torquing that knee, we don't want this knee joint to open up laterally so he can just stabilize that, pull maybe more from the thigh right there. Mm -hmm. Still feel some hip mobility here. And again, with stretches, this isn't like a minute hold. We've been holding this for over a minute, but when, when people are gonna do stretches, gonna have them actively come up into it, get into that position, just give it a little tug, maybe four or five seconds, and then we wanna come out of that. And then we're gonna have them do it again. Just a nice active mobilization as opposed to a passive stretch, static stretch. This looks like a supine active pigeon stretch. Very much so. Yeah, because I was just thinking if I was on my, if I was on this way and I was doing that, I'd be going through a pigeon pose pretty yeah, much. Pretty similar. Yeah. yeah definitely. No, that is, uh, that's really good. And also, one of the things too is what Dr. Holly was saying is sometimes you're going to see a stretch where we're, we're doing this stretch, but as we, as we roll over, we're really limiting what we can do because this, this leg is not fixed. So I think that's a key point is 
if you are going to do a glute stretch either pull across your body or as we've showed you here really watch for this whole leg shift over because we're going to really reduce the effectiveness of the stretch yeah definitely for sure what would you think about this modification here is if someone has to do it seated mm -hmm. if they can't get into that lying position sure if they did it like this yeah so you're in a very good position you are probably not the norm okay <laughs> because you sort of are more aware of what's going on. So the biggest thing with this is, if we are in a seated position, in a long sitting position, where that foot's out, the thing that I worry about the most with, with patients is that they are gonna actually flex that spine. So if, if their lower back rounds forward and then that leg sticks out, they're gonna create a lot of tension in their lower back. So this can be good. You might feel this, you probably feel the stretch. If that back can again stay flat against something. So if they can keep this back flat against, you know, the arm of the couch against the wall yeah. and they're in that long sitting position, that's okay. If they start to feel the low back to be a little bit achy or if they start to, to get some pain in there, then we want to get out of this position. We don't want that. But this is a good modification for that for sure with the back support. Yeah, because I mean, sometimes a client might just due to anatomy or whatever problems they might may have or current injuries on the back might be hard. Yeah, for sure. Against the wall. I feel it almost to the same degree, not as intense, but it's still effective. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, for sure. Good. Very good. All right. So yeah, that's what we've, we basically looked at it a couple of ways, but as far as what we've been doing is, we're going to do the rolling first before the stretching. Right? Definitely, yeah. And the stretching, I mean, normally, but I mean, it's not always the case, but a long muscle is a weak muscle, so it's not going to be as responsive to explosive training and strength training. I guess, unless you have like a real jammed up hip, would you want a static stretch beforehand? But just generally speaking, the stretching and everything else, post-workout, all the foam rolling and stuff could be used before workouts. Good rule of thumb? Very good. Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. All right, so thanks very much. Next time we're going to be looking at some of the ankle. And then we're going to go back down because, as we said, it's kind of seasonal. So sometimes with runners, we feel like ankle, IT band, knee and hip all go together. So next thing we're going to be talking about uh, some ankle stuff. Definitely. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Thank great. you very much for watching. Thanks.